Hello everyone, tonight I would like to show you how you can run Windows inside of Ubuntu using a program called VirtualBox. And right now I'm running Ubuntu 14.10 and although there are quite a few steps to this process, it's actually real simple. So let's begin. First of all, if you have not done so, you need to install VirtualBox. And because there are a couple of things that we need to grab, I find that it's easiest if you just head on over to their website which is virtualbox.org. And from here, you head on over to the Downloads page. Next, you need to download the binary that corresponds with your host. And because I'm using Ubuntu, I want to download the VirtualBox for Linux host. So I'll click on that. Next, you need to choose the appropriate package for your Linux distribution. And because Ubuntu 14.10 was only released a couple of days ago, VirtualBox does not yet have a package for it. So I just choose the next best thing and download the one for 14.4. And as you do this, you need to decide whether you want the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. And when you click on it, the download by default will automatically run through the Ubuntu Software Center. So as that's downloading, we need to grab an ISO of Windows, and these are actually free to get. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Windows 7 32-bit. So I simply head on over to Google and just type in Windows 7 ISO. And if you come on over to techfirst.net, they have um, a bunch of Windows 7 ISOs that we can download for free. So. We'll just scroll down and you see they have all of these different options that we can choose from. And for this tutorial, I am going to be using the Windows 7 32-bit version and that's a professional English one. So just click on that and it will begin to download. Now keep in mind that these ISOs are anywhere from 1 to 2 gigabytes in size. So depending on your internet connection, this could take over an hour or more to complete. So just be aware of that before you begin. Once you've downloaded that and VirtualBox is installed, it's time to open up VirtualBox. And we're greeted with this welcome screen. And the first step that we want to take is we want to create a new machine. So we'll just click on that and we'll give it a name. And we'll name this Windows 7. And you can see that the version automatically updated corresponding with the name that we gave it. However, as I said, I'll be using the 32-bit, so I'll just choose that and click Next. On this page, the memory size, we need to decide how much memory we're going to allocate to our virtual machine. Now, as you can see, right now I have about 8 gigabytes of memory installed on my computer. And typically when I'm running a Windows virtual machine, I like to give it about half of my memory. However, depending on your needs, you can choose to give it more or less. A word of caution though, um, is to not starve your host um, operating system of memory. So as you're giving it more, be aware that your main operating system will need memory to run as well while you're hosting the virtual machine. So just keep that in mind. And once you choose that, just click Next. Now here we need to choose if we're going to create a hard drive. Our first option that we're presented with is just to just not add a virtual hard drive whatsoever. And this is a good option if you're creating like a virtual Linux machine because you can run live CDs off of it. However, it doesn't work so great for Windows if you, do, if you choose this option you won't be able to save or install the operating system. Another option that we're given is we can use an existing virtual hard drive file. And this is for like, if you're dual booting with Windows and you want to boot your virtu virtual machine off of your existing Windows partition. However, the te technical details of that and how to run it are out of the scope for this tutorial. So, for now, we're just going to stick with the default, which is create a virtual hard drive. So we just click create, 
and it will give us a bunch of different file types that we can choose from. And I find that the VirtualBox disk image works just fine as is. So click Next. Here we need to choose whether we want a dynamically allocated or a fixed size. The fixed size version takes longer to create, but they're faster to use. However, I find, especially when I am using Windows, is that I tend to add more stuff to my virtual hard drive than I think I will in the beginning. So by choosing a dynamically allocated, the hard drive will grow as you add to it up to a fixed set size. So I'm going to stick with that option, click next, and here I need to choose what that fixed size will be. And for this tutorial, 25 gigabytes is more than enough for what I need. So I'll leave it at that, but you can add more to it or less as you see fit. And then you'll click create. And there you go. You'll see that the main home page is updated with all of the specifications of your Windows 7 machine. But we're not quite ready to boot into it yet. Before we, before we can start up Windows 7, we need to configure a few more settings. So with this highlighted, click on the settings icon and come on down to system. And here we want to make sure that the enable EFI is not checked. We need this blank for this one to work for Windows. Up here, click on the processor tab. You can choose how many processors you want to assign to your virtual machine. Now on this computer I have four processors, so I'm going to go ahead and give Windows two of them to run with. Okay, and then you'll click on the display tab, and here you can allocate how much video memory you want to give to your machine, and I'm going to just go ahead and assign all that I can to it. And I want to enable 3D acceleration and 2D acceleration. So you'll do that and then click on storage. Here we need to add our ISO to the um, boot order for the Windows 7 machine. So if you'll click on the empty CD disk and then come on over here and click choose a virtual CD or DVD disk file. And from here, browse to where you downloaded your Windows 7 ISO. So we'll do that. I have my Windows 7 32-bit, I'll click Open, and then we can click OK. And now we are ready to power on our Windows 7 machine. So make sure this is highlighted and click Start. And we can see that Windows is now loading the files necessary to install. And this should only take a couple of minutes to complete. the language that we wish to install in. And of course I'm in the US so I'm just going to stick with English. We'll click Next. Click on Install Now. And we need to read the license terms. Of course I accept because I read all of this. And we want to choose Custom. And here we can see the 25 gigabytes that we allocated for our virtual drive. So with that highlighted we'll click Next. And this will take a couple of minutes to install. And then after that, we need to type in a name, username for the computer. So I'll just go ahead and give it my name. And then we'll leave the computer name default for this. Next, and it is recommended that you type in a password. Um, and I would highly recommend that you do have a password for this. However, for this, tutorial, I'm going to leave it empty. Um, now the ISO that we downloaded for Windows was free to download, however to legally use it you need a Windows product key. Now I'm not going to say anything one way or the other, it's up to you whether you choose to use a product key or if you 
go on to Google and search for alternative methods to avoid having to use a key. That is completely up to you. I will not go into that in this tutorial. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave this unchecked and click Next. Uh, you have the option to use the recommended window settings for security updates and downloads. Um, I prefer to have full control over this, so I'm just going to leave it at Ask Me Later. Um, set today's date, click Next. We're on my home network, so we'll let that apply my network settings. So, take just a few moments to prepare, and we're almost done. And now we're in Windows 7. However, before we stop here, we have one more thing that we need to do, and that is to enable the guest additions for VirtualBox. And to do this, we need to go back to VirtualBox's webpage. Again, that is virtualbox.org. And go back to the downloads page. And we want to download the VirtualBox guest extension pack. So we'll just click on all supported platforms. And we will open it with VirtualBox. And as you can see, five seconds, so it's a pretty small file and it should automatically open with VirtualBox upon completion. So there it is and we'll just click install. As you can see I already have the Gust pack installed so it's giving me the option to remove it. So I'll just click cancel. Now to enable this we go back into our Windows 7 and we need to boot this into safe mode. So, the easiest way to do this is to click the X up here and click on power off the machine. And this will simulate crashing the Windows system. Come back to the main menu and click on start. And we need to boot it into safe mode. So, give it a moment to start up and load the files. And we just want plain old safe mode. it load all the drivers. Okay, and now that we're in safe mode, come up here along to the top, and if you don't have the um, menu and window title, it will be up here on this bar, but you just want to click on devices, and we want to insert the guest editions CD image, so we'll click on that. We can close this window, and if we click on start, come on over to our computer. We'll see that the VirtualBox Guest Edition CD is in, so we just need to open this and click on the application for it. Click Next. Let it save in the default place. We want to, I want to enable the 3D support. Click Install and let this run through and it's going to ask you quite a few questions like this so I find that it's easiest if we just click always trust and click install so we can bypass those questions and get on with our day and then you have to reboot and what the guest editions will do for you um, it will enable additional features most notably, you'll be able to resize this window as you want, make it as big as you want, and you'll also be able to use USB flash drives within your virtual machine. So those two features alone make life a lot easier. And that's it. That's all that you need to do to run Windows as a virtual machine on your Ubuntu desktop. And like I said earlier, there are quite a few steps and it can seem a little daunting at first, but if you just go through it one step at a time, you'll find that it's a lot easier than it looks. And before you know it, you'll have two operating systems running at once. And this is good for when you're working in Linux and you want to just run that one app that just has no support and no love at all in Linux. 
this is a good way to get those applications running without having to dual boot your system. Thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe on my channel and check out for new tutorials and how-tos.